हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी सी एस आर नेट दिसंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सोल्यूशन टूडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व द कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस पार्ट बी क्वेश्चन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर यू कैन फॉलो माई यूट्यूब चैनल वेर यू कैन फाइंड द प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ द सी एस आर यू जी सी नेट एंड यू कैन सी द वेरियस पी वाई क्वेश्चन सीरीज एज वेल एज दी अदर लेक्चर्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ द शॉर्टकट ट्विक्स एक्सप्लेन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द पी वाई क्वेश्चन ऑफ द कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस ऑफ द लास्ट ट्वेल्व ईयर यू कैन वॉच माई दिस लेक्चर इफ यू आर न्यू टू माई यूट्यूब वीडियो यू कैन सिंपली सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड स्कैन एंड ज्वाइन माई व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप फॉर द वेरियस डिस्कशन सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस क्वेश्चन एच इज गिवन टू बी हियर सच दैट इमेजनरी पार्ट ऑफ जेड दैट इज वाई इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो इज द अपर हाफ सच दैट एफ ऑफ जेड इज ई रिस्ट पावर आयोटा जेड देन वी ऑल नो वट इज द जेड इज एक्स प्लस आयोटा वाई इफ आई सब्सटीट्यूड हियर इट इज आयोटा एक्स माइनस वाई देन ओल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दी एफ ऑफ एच सी माइनस जीरो इज अ कंप्लीट माइनस जीरो सो वट इज द एफ ऑफ एच कलेक्शन ऑफ ऑल दो जेट सच दैट वाई इज माई ग्रेटर देन जीरो आई कॉल दिस इज माई ई रिस्ट पावर माइनस वाई सच दैट वाई इज माई ग्रेटर देन जीरो देन काउंटेबल कन्वेक्स सेट एंड हेयर बिकॉज इट इज ऑनली द वन करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज देयर एंड दैट कुड बी वेरी ईजी बिकॉज यू कैन सिंपली स्टार्ट विद अयर वट इज द एब्सोट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एब्सोट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज माई वन and this is my e raised to power minus y now since y is my positive number so this number will definitely be less than 1 because e raised to power is always be positive number so it means f of h is bounded that's over because there is only one correct option so that is the correct answer of this problem how many roots are there so what what theorem come in your mind when you talk about the number of the roots That is the Rocci theorem. Fine. What is that? If you have the two entire function such that f of z is greater than of g of z on the disk, whatever the disk is given to you, then f plus g and f have the same number of the roots. Fine. Now, how you can find the f and g? Look at that. On which the coefficient is my highest? What is the coefficient? Is this one is the highest? So I consider this is my f. Fine. And the rest of them is my g. So what is the f of this over this disk? So that will be fifty less than equal to fifty. Fine. What is the remaining of the g? It is less than or equal to one because this is my plus forty plus six plus one. So it is my forty. Eight. So clearly say f is greater than of g because f has a fifty value. So f is greater than of g of z. So it means by the Rocci theorem f plus g and f have the same root. F plus g means that is a this term. And what is the maximum root of this? It has a thirty roots. So the right answer of this problem is c is the correct answer. Okay, f is a real differentiable function. What kind of the function? Not given. So I can simply assume z. Fine. It is easy different. You can assume any of the others, like sine of z and and any others, because it is not given that whether it's entire or not. It's a simple differentiable function. U and v are here. Gradient is written as u x. So basically, it is written as u x. i cap okay it is a complex number i can return like how then which of the following is necessary true which of the following orthogonal what is the meaning of the orthogonal is that means the dot product is my zero if i prove this one it means u and v are orthogonal then okay if i choose here what is my u is a real part of this is basically a z So real part of the z u is my x, v is my y. Fine. So then, what is the gradient of the u? U x one, u y zero. What is the gradient of the v? V of x zero, v of y is one. Then what is the dot product of this? So what is the dot product of this? Is one plus one that is two, which is 
नॉन जीरो सो वंस दिस इज नॉन जीरो इट मीन्स आर दी ऑर्थोगनल नो डेल डॉट दिस इज जीरो एट एवरी पॉइंट यू कैन सी अबाउट द सेम एग्जाम्पल दिस इज माई नॉन जीरो एफ इज माई इंटायर फंक्शन देन डॉट प्रोडक्ट इज अ जीरो इफ डॉट प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो देन एफ इज माई नॉन इंटायर फंक्शन आई कैन कंसिडर दी अनदर वन से हेयर इट इज माई एक्स माइनस आयोटा वाई देन यू विल बी माई एक्स वी इज माई माइनस वाई वट इज द ग्रेडियंट ऑफ द यू वन को माई जीरो यू ऑफ एक्स यू वाई वट इज द ग्रेडियंट ऑफ द वी v of x v of y so what is the dot product of this so 1 into 0 plus 0 into minus 1 it is a zero so this definition satisfied then and it is zero at each point is the f is entire clearly say this is my is the mod x mod z is always the in non entire function fine because we all knows the derivative is one which is non zero so therefore it is non entire function so this option is cancel out so the right option is c is the right answer but you can easily verify that if f is entire function it means ux is vy and uy is minus vx so what is the gradient of u ux uy gradient of the v is vx vy so if i take that dot product you say ux vx u y v y so if i substitute u x is my v y v x is my minus u y and you can see it will be zero always so f is entire then this is my correct answer of this problem okay f is a n cross n complex entries and is my here which of the following is my true is a invariant okay invariant subspace invariant subspace invariant all the eigen values are my real this is clearly if i choose n is my four fine so then i can choose any of the complex entries like iota 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 and iota rest values are my zero fine so clearly say what are the eigen values eigen values are my iota and you can see all eigen values are my real number so but none of them is a real number so this option is cancelled fine now the rest of the options are my invariant fine what is the invariant means if you have the mapping t from the vector space v to v then w is the subspace of the v this is my subspace we called this is my invariant if you prove that this is the subset of here fine now if you look at that a is my n cross n that means cn to cn so t is basically my a so your target is to prove a w is the subset of w fine if you prove this one then you can say w is my invariant subspace of cn now what come in your mind when you look about the matrix firstly identity matrix fine if you take a is equal to i does this property satisfied which is a w it's a always a subset of this fine so what is the meaning of that this a that is basically identity is my invariant subspace fine so look at that a does not have any non zero invariant so clearly say this is my non zero and it is a it does not have but i can prove that it's a subspace is a invariant subspace so this option is cancel now out of the second and fourth a square again he said does not so what is my a square a square is again i if i take a is equal to i then a square is again i then again i can say i w is the subset of this i w means that's a i a square w so what does it means this is my invariant subspace but he said does not so this option is also cancel the rest of the option b is my correct answer it's one of the easiest question in this complex analysis okay look at this one f is a meromorphic function that is a entire function 
open set f has a no zero and the no pole on the c on the c that on the boundary there is no pole and p is my number of the poles and zero is my number of the zeros inside the c okay this is a pole of the f zeros of the f then your target is to find here what is the theorem you have to use argumentative principle what is the argumentative principle suggested you that means the derivative over f this will be number of the zeros minus number of the poles this is my zeros and this is my pole fine but if you look about that here instead of the z the function is my z of f if i consider this is my h fine so then how many poles are there how many poles of the h because if you multiply the z the, the pole the same as the pole of the f this is my np so what is the zeros of the h so if you multiply with the z so definitely this is my zeros of the f plus 1 because of this quantity so that means the if you look about these options how many n number of the poles number of the zeros minus number of the pole this is the right answer of this product this cancel n0 minus 1 but we need a plus 1 so the right answer is a is my correct answer you can see the term z into f fine when you multiply this z raised to power 1 so the number of the poles remain the same while number of the zeros are plus 1 on the other hand if instead of the z into f if you written like here what will happen the number of the pole will be increases by 1 and number of the zeros will remain the same so this is the way you can solve like this definitely number of the pole will be increased by 1 depending f has already a zero pole inside so the right answer of this problem is a is the right answer you can uh, scan and join my whatsapp group and i hope you can see like and comment on the my video because all the shortcut tricks is explained we will see the next lecture on some more questions till then you can like share and comment on my video best of luck students happy learning